Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Half a century has passed since the Soviet Union probe Venera 3 became the first spacecraft to touch down on the surface of an alien world, the planet Venus. Fifty years later, NASA has begun preparations for a return visit to Venus. However, it was more than half a century ago that the planet began to offer many surprises to investigating scientists, as the astronomer Victor A. Fursoff wrote in his book, The Solar Planets. It would be hard to find a more improbable planet than Venus, from its extraordinary high temperatures, to its networks of filamentary scars running across its surface, to its mysteriously shiny mountains at its highest altitudes, to its occasional superbolts of lightning, to its superfast upper atmospheric winds, to its enormous comet-like plasma tail, to the twin vortices at its north and south poles. Venus still presents many unsolved mysteries for planetary scientists. One of the biggest surprises early in the space age was the discovery of Venus's super hot temperatures. Prior to this discovery, many scientists, most notably Fred Whipple, the originator of the dirty snowball model of comets, had proposed that the surface of Venus might be mostly or entirely covered by oceans. But scientists soon discovered that Venus is in fact the hottest planet in the solar system, with an average surface temperature of 863 degrees Fahrenheit. The consensus theory today of planetary scientists is that Venus's dense, mostly carbon dioxide atmosphere has caused heating through a greenhouse effect. But as the aforementioned astronomer Fursoff noted, Earth's seas are not boiling hot despite the total greenhouse effect of water and average sunlight stronger than at the ground level of Venus. Nor is it at all clear how such a condition could have become established. Australian physicist Wal Thornhill addressed the issue in a 2003 article. He states, Venus receives 1.9 times more solar radiation than Earth, but its clouds reflect about 80% of that sunlight, so that Venus actually absorbs less solar energy than the Earth. Even with the maximum greenhouse effect, the effective surface temperature of Venus should be low enough to freeze water. What is being asked of the so-called runaway greenhouse effect is equivalent to expecting a well-insulated oven to reach a temperature sufficient to melt lead by having only the pilot light switched on. Some scientists now recognize that extreme events are required to explain Venus's extraordinary temperatures. A recent study proposes that a spherical object between 500 and 1,000 miles wide struck Venus, melting its upper mantle and triggering the so-called runaway greenhouse effect. However, like countless other mysteries of Venus, its extremely high temperatures may be the result of extraordinary events that planetary scientists have never considered. It was well over half a century ago that the scientific heretic Emanuel Velikovsky proposed in his best-selling book, Worlds in Collision, that the planet Venus was a comet that passed close enough to Earth to violently perturb its axis, decimating early civilizations. By studying the historical accounts of far-flung cultures, Velikovsky constructed a thesis of celestial catastrophe. The converging ancient images include the Babylonian torch star Venus and bearded star Venus, the Mexican smoking star Venus, the Peruvian long-haired star Venus, the Egyptian great star scattering its flame in fire, and the widespread imagery of Venus as a flaming serpent or dragon in the sky. In each instance, the cometary language is undeniable, for these were the very symbols of the comet in the ancient languages. By following the evidence, Velikovsky discovered that Venus holds a special place in the world's first astronomies. In both the old world and the new, Ancient stargazers regarded Venus with awe and terror, carefully observing its risings and settings, and claiming the planet to be the cause of world-ending catastrophe. Velikovsky reasoned that these astronomical traditions must have had roots in a traumatic human experience, though modern science has always assured us that the planets evolved in quiet and undisturbed isolation over billions of years. Based on extensive cross-cultural comparison, Velikovsky concluded that the planet Venus, prior to the dawn of recorded history, was ejected violently from the gas giant Jupiter, displaying a spectacular comet-like tail. Its later catastrophic approach to the Earth, around 1500 BC, 
provided the historical backdrop to the Hebrew Exodus. In Worlds in Collision, Velikovsky argued that the terrifying gods of the ancient world were planets. The book recounted two close encounters of the comet or protoplanet Venus with the Earth. The director of the Thunderbolts project, David Talbot, was originally inspired by Velikovsky's research and began his own reconstruction of these ancient catastrophes based on a comparison of converging cultural traditions from around the world. Talbot does not claim to know when Venus was born, but rather, he is focused on Venus's role in a primordial alignment of planets close to the Earth. In an earlier time, just prior to the birth of the great civilizations, the planet Saturn hung as a massive sphere in the sky. Seen visually in its center was a radiant star surrounded by explosive streamers. Cultures the world over came to see Venus in feminine terms, as the mother goddess. In the Thunderbolts documentary, Symbols of an Alien Sky, Talbot discusses in detail the complex role of Venus in ancient myth as the great star, the mother of all stars, the central eye, heart, and soul of the primeval sun god Saturn, the hub and spokes of the wheel of heaven, and much more. What does one expect of a planet that was recently the focus of an intense, cometary, electrical discharge? The answer may be exactly what we see. As a 2013 Space.com report stated, the planet Venus sometimes looks less like a planet and more like a comet. This statement describes the changes scientists have witnessed in Venus's ionosphere, much like a comet in response to the solar wind. Indeed, one of the earliest space age surprises about Venus was the discovery of its so-called cometary magnetotail in the form of, quote, stringy things or plasma current filaments stretching as far as the Earth's orbit. In the electric universe, any body in our solar system on a sufficiently eccentric orbit about the sun will display comet-like characteristics due to its movement radially through the sun's electric field. Venus is at the focus of an electrical discharge and the electrical phenomena witnessed today on the planet can be understood as a smaller scale version of the very activity witnessed by mankind in prehistory. The twin vortices at Venus's poles are the focus points of Birkeland currents from the sun, which drive the planet's super-rotating upper atmosphere. In recent years, solar storms have been found to create increased lightning on Earth, and it's electric currents from the sun that also drive the extraordinary Venusian lightning. Venus has a more direct electrical connection with the Sun, which mainstream astronomy describes as so-called magnetic flux ropes. But magnetic fields in space plasma can only be sustained over time by electric currents flowing in the plasma. Although Venus has no water clouds that are thought necessary to generate lightning, there is evidence that lightning on the planet is far more intense than on Earth, with frequent extreme lightning called superbolts which strike from the Venusian ionosphere directly to ground. On Earth, water clouds prevent such powerful discharges by spreading the charge from above, transferred there by ionospheric sprites. The superfast winds of Venus are also difficult to explain by conventional meteorology. Cloud movements show a four-day rotation period of the upper atmosphere at the equator, which declines to two days towards the poles. Within the framework of standard theory, no force is present to drive the upper winds around the planet at such a speed, since Venus itself has a rotational period of 243 days retrograde, and the planet's lower winds are exceptionally sluggish. Since the planet is the same temperature overall, there is no temperature gradient to drive these winds either. In recent years, it's been reported that the superfast winds of Venus have actually been steadily accelerating for nearly a decade. In the electric universe, this is explained through analogy to the simplest electrical motor, called a Faraday disk motor. The Faraday disk motor requires only a magnetic field and a disk conductor, or something symmetrical. When a current is directed inward to the poles of the object and out at the equator, it will cause the object to rotate. We note that while the Venusian winds were found to be accelerating, scientists also discovered that the planet's rotation has been mysteriously slowing down. In the electric universe theory as developed by Wall Thornhill, the deposition or extraction of charge from an object will change its mass and therefore its rotation rate, which has been observed on Earth in small changes of the Earth's rotation, called glitches, when we receive a large blast of charged particles from the Sun. And glitches in Mars's rotation have also been found in association with its mysterious global dust storms. 
on Venus then, both the accelerating winds and the planet's slowing rotation could be due to a variation in the incoming electrical current flow. But most telling of all are the filamentary, so-called Lichtenberg networks seen stretching for thousands of miles across Venus's surface. When electrical discharges occur in high-pressure gases, the result is the kind of filamentary patterns so clearly present on Venus. A growing field of evidence suggests that the principles brought to light by the Electric Universe paradigm may help to illuminate an extraordinary new picture of Venus, its place within our solar system today, and its remarkable impact on human history. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.